Hey, so I know it's been a while since I've made one of these videos. I'm very sorry about that. I've been traveling a ton for work. I might make another video blog about all that stuff. I recorded a bunch of footage while I was on the road. Anyway, uh, this is going to be the first in another series of tutorials around how to use T-splines. So this is going to be the first video, absolute beginner stuff and like how to make custom objects and how to like very quickly ideate stuff. So with that said, let's jump right in. All right, so a couple things before we jump right in. Uh, so first of all, the data set I'm using is the MA chassis for a Mini 4WD. There's a link in the description below so you can download this data set to work off of it yourself. I've also included a link to Amazon where you can purchase one of these if you decide that you want to build one and test it out yourself. I'd love to see a few of these happening in the real world and I think if we get enough people doing it, we could have a meetup and have people race their own design bodies. Should be fun. The other thing, uh, you may notice that I am using the fancy new UI preview, which allows you to tab out your workflows and consolidates the workspaces. I think it's great. If you want to try it out yourself, just go to preferences and it is going to be under preview right there. So just switch that on and you'll get the same thing. All right, with that said, let's jump right in. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is go to create form. And I'm going to start by creating a few different sketches on this guy to help me out um, that I'm going to use as my basically um, base data set. So I'm going to create a sketch. Everything is already mid plane against the origins, and it's going to make life nice and easy. I'm going to click on this plane, and then um, I'm going to go over to spline. And I'm going to use the new control point splines. So I'm going to use a three-point control point spline. And if you don't know about CV curves, I'm going to upload a quick tip video that shows the differences between three-point, five-point, and then straight up splines as well. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. So the first arc I'm going to draw is basically the overall profile of the vehicle. So I'm going to do like four like that. And then if I just hit escape on the keyboard, I can now grab these anchor points and just sort of tweak my first vehicle profile. Let's just move that back in a little bit. And pull it up here. Let's just drag that forward a little bit. All right, that'll do. Next, I'm going to stop the sketch and switch my sketches on so I can see that. And then I'm just gonna start a new sketch. And this time I am going to do another control point spline and this is for the kind of secondary profile of the vehicle so I'm gonna put that like there and let's just tweak that a little bit pull it forward just so it's about there pull it down maybe straighten it up a little there we go don't have to be too precious about it once you start working in t-splines a lot of this will get really really easy oh, don't need that and then if I click on that spline, right click and then hit move, I can now move that into position. So I'm just gonna drag that. Mm, 15 mil, sounds about good. Then I'm gonna go to construct and I'm gonna just put a construction plane right there on the point of the alloy. And then start a new sketch, which are gonna be my wheel arches. So for this one, I'm gonna go to arc and I'm gonna use the center point arc so I can Make sure, you obviously it's really important to make sure that you're at the center of this, which my origin point is not. So I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard for project. Just click on that. Now I have my center point. Then I'm gonna go back to arc and center point arc. So the way the center point arc works is basically it enab enables you to draw a sweep of a, of a circle so you don't have the full thing. So I'm gonna define my uh, circumference, uh, my radius, excuse me as 15 mil and I'm going to start let's go over here go back to 15 and then click once and so you can see it starts to draw an arc around so I can basically define the shape of my wheel arch and I'm going to go to about there um, zoom out go over to this guy hit project again so we'll go to create and then arc, and then center point arc, and same thing again. So I'm basically just drawing the profile of the wheel arch. I'm gonna start a little higher this time, make sure it's 15. 
and pull it round and go to about there. Part of the other reason I'm leaving this nice big gap is when I thicken this out afterwards, When you, because what I'm going to do is essentially just create a surface. When the surface is complete, I'm going to need to thicken that out to give it a volume, and so I want to make sure I have some clearance over my wheel arches. So next I'm just going to stop the sketch and then jump into the actual modeling. So, so everything I do for this is going to be using uh, the extrude tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is extrude out this line and just pull it. 10 mils good. I don't want an angle on that. I want that to be zero. And I want eight faces. That's great. And I want it to be uniform as well. So you see if I pick curvature, it's going to try and fit the T-splines as best as it can to the curvature of the actual um, CV curvy drew. What I want is uniform because it's going to make life easier for me later when I want to start connecting things up together. Okay. And then I'm going to extrude this one out and let's go five and this time i'm going to just have it line up with the number of faces i have here so i've got one two three four five six so i set that one to six and then lastly the wheel arches so i'm going to pick this one and this time i'm only going to go with three because that lines up with this and i'm going to go two mil in the other direction and I also, I'm gonna put a bit of a flare on that, so I'm gonna set that to a 45 degree angle. And if I hold down Command and click on the other one, I can do the same thing. You'll notice here though, if you pick both at the same time, it's going to go 45 degrees from that new uh, midpoint between the two. So you end up with this weird kind of skew if behavior on your wheel arches. This is why you have to do them one at a time. So that's the first one. Right click, repeat extrude, and just gotta switch my sketch back on. And same thing, it's gonna remember the settings from the last time I used it, and then I can just hit okay. All right, um, hide that sketch, close this up, and now I can start playing with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is with edit form, I'm gonna double click that full edge so it grabs it. And if I hold down alt or option on the keyboard, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, I can start to grow faces out. So I'm gonna do a little bit like that. I think this is too close, so I'm just gonna grab that edge and just Boop, like that and shrink it down and let's see so I pulled that down a little bit I think that's good next I'm gonna bridge up across here so I'm gonna to go to modify and then bridge and we've got one two three four five six and then side two one two three four five and six and now you can also define basically how many faces you want. I'm gonna go with two. So you'll see with the preview switched on, that brings that in. Now I can maintain a crease edge, which basically will keep that edge sharp and keep that edge sharp, but then I'm gonna end up with a really weird looking vehicle. So I'm gonna leave that off and just hit okay. You see that blends those together pretty neatly. Um, I'm just going to pull this face forward clean this up a little bit that's better and then I'm just gonna grab that and start to strain it out and you'll see this is why I'm not particularly precious about um, what's going on here however I have noticed that while I'm doing that it's making this area of the vehicle go weird so I'm just gonna cancel that and then just grab these two and give them a little rotation also a bit bizarre, clean that up. And then if I type 0 0.01, then I'm gonna do the same for here. Grab these two, 0 0.01, okay. And that's starting to give the vehicle some character. It's giving a little bit of shape. I like what's happening. Um, I do need to extend this out though, because um, I wanna clean these up, make sure that these two meet the vehicle in the right place. And I also noticed I've got too many faces here, so I'm gonna to have to just delete that and do it again. So using um, that same alt trick, if I hold down alt on the keyboard um, on the keyboard or option, and then just grab this, I'm gonna pull that out once, and then pull it out a second time like that, and then just grab both of these, and just pull them this way a little bit for now. Next, I can go to Modify, and then I'm gonna go to Weld Vertices, and I'm just gonna 
connect that up like that. Now it's gone a little weird um, and maybe not too clean. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go to utilities and then go make uniform, click on it and hit okay. And basically it, it's gonna like hunt down for any weird uh, areas in your model and essentially fix them. So I don't need this anymore. So I'm just gonna get rid of those because there's too many faces. Again, one of the best things about working with T-splines is if something doesn't work, just throw it out and do it again. It's really easy. Um, and it doesn't take a ton of time to get back to what you want. So I'm gonna switch that to four faces. Um, let's see, we got one, two, three, four. It's kind of stretched out. Let's just drop it to three. No, it loses its shape at three. So if we stick it with four, I've just got to pull this out and just kind of clean these areas up. And then let's just repeat that on the back. So make sure that's set to four. Okay. So I think I'm going to do the same thing on the back here. I'm just going to pull this out just to connect this up again. And so I'm going to use edit form and I'm going to come out three times this time. So I've got one, two, three faces. So it's one, two, and three like that. Okay. And then again on the modifier, we'll go to world vertices and just clean this up. All right, cool. So starting to build a little character out with the vehicle, it's starting to make a little bit more sense, look like it actually is a car, less so much like a kind of just weird little oddity. Then I'm gonna to go to uh, modify, I'm gonna use bridge again, uh, and I'm gonna take my four edges here, and I'm gonna connect those to my four edges here. I think two faces is good for now. Hit okay. Yeah, that's, that's starting to look like something. It's got a little character to it. I'm gonna clean those areas up on the back later. And let's bring the front out. So again, using that same trick, just holding down Alt. So that's, whoops. That's one. Let's just pull that back a bit line them up as best as I can and that's two and then let's weld those vertices again so with this is going to be nice and easy I can just drag a window across them like that and I'm done cool all right and then let's bring these together so we'll go to modify bridge it's one two three four and then side two again we've got one two, three, and four. All right, starting to get some character. Obviously, some weirdness going on over here. This is starting to look more and more like a vehicle. So let's, uh, let's start to give this some definition. So I'm going to pull this down twice, so I've got something to clean this area up with. So again, I just go Alt, and that's one, and that's two. And I'm not going to connect that bit up. I'm going to leave that as it is. So we're going to modify. And then we want to weld vertices again. That's one. That's two. And that's one. And that's two. Now, we've got something good going on, but the wheels have gone kind of weird. So I'm going to get rid of the wheels and I'm also going to just clean this T-spline up because this mega line like this is not ideal. So I'm going to double click on those, use that same trick from before and then if I just set that to 0 0.01, it's going to straighten it out and then I'm going to get rid of those wheel arches because they've just not really worked and they're a bit gross. So. I go here. Do you want one of the easiest ways to get rid of it? Because I want to maintain the surf the faces from the other side. If I just double click that edge and it's gone. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Double click that edge and it's gone. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have any weirdness going on around the other side. 
And I think I'm going to get rid of this through here. Don't like what's going on there. Now, obviously, this has caused some issues where we've got a surface that's gone bizarre. So we could try our trick with make uniform. Didn't really do anything. So I'm just going to get rid of those, bring them back in with the undo button, and then just play around with it a different way. So this time what I'm going to do is this line here, this face is kind of superfluous. It's not really doing anything. So if I get rid of that, it's just going to give me a little bit of wiggle room to play with. And then I can grab this edge and under modify, there's another tool that's called slide edge, which is here. And so with slide edge, it does exactly what it sounds like. You can basically just move where the edge is happening. So if I pull it up a little bit to this side, it's going to change the profile of the vehicle. It's also going to give me some breathing room, which is really the most important part here. I'm also going to grab these three. And before I put the wheel arches back in, just pull that down. That's a bit much. Let's go minus three. And then double click the edge. And if I look at this from the top, you'll notice obviously it's doing exactly what you expect. It's pulling around and following the profile of the vehicle. It's just a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna clean it by straightening it out. So I think that's good. Then I'm gonna pick these three to give them a flatter profile. And then this is just like, coming way too far down around the front. So if I grab those two, I can straighten it like that. And so I've got a, something interesting happening with the profile. If I just tweak that a little bit, now I'm in a good position to bring the wheel arches back in. So I'm gonna do that. And so I will go back to my extrude tool grab this i'm only going to go one mil this time and make sure i'm only using four faces that's great and then i can always just move this if i feel like i'm too close uh, i will extrude the other wheel arch out and i'm going to move both of them just a little further away so four faces again this is set to 45 degree, that's what I want. Hit okay. And then just to move them, all I gotta do is double click. Ah, yes. So the double click trick, this is something that catches me out sometimes as you just saw. The double click trick only works on a single surface. So if I click on this one, now if I hold down shift and click on the other one, it's not gonna work because what it's actually looking for is a surface continuity. So there's a surface continuity here because it's a single surface, but then this one is a whole separate thing. So nothing's gonna happen. The other easy way to just move them is to right click and then go move slash copy. And then I can just pick one, pick two, and then I'm just gonna move this. Let's go two mil out. That's how that looks good. Yeah, that's giving a little bit more breathing room for the profile of the wheel. So next I'll use bridge again. I'm going to modify bridge. That's one, two, whoops. Let's try that again. I actually pick the right edges this time. One, two, three, four, side two. Give me one, two, three, four. And I'm only going to use one face. All right, that's much better. And then I'm gonna bridge on the other side. So we'll go to modify and then bridge. And that's one, two, three, four. And then side two is gonna be one, two, three, and four. All right. So we've got a little bit more definition. We've got more of an actual car profile going on. Uh, it's starting to look like it's got some character to it. So next thing to do is mirror it across. 
easy way to do that is to go symmetry, mirror duplicate, and then you can just pick the body and the mirror plane is gonna be that plane there. So I can get to it by long pressing with the left mouse button, press okay. You can activate weld, which will automatically turn it into back into a single body and then just hit okay. All right. So we've got something starting to look a little bit more like a car. It's got some character to it, but um, there's some like weirdness going on here. I think this doesn't look particularly good. Um, I could add some creases in for some definition. So I think that's what I'm gonna do next. So uh, one of the other things that's really important with the Mini 4WDs is making sure you've got easy access to this back here. Now, right now I don't have easy access to that back there because it's kind of coming over the top of it a little bit. So I'm gonna grab these first and just use that same straighten out trick and make sure I'm actually using perspective with auto faces. There we go, make life a bit easier. And let's just flatten that down. So 0 0.01 and then we'll look at it from the top and just do the same thing. Just flatten that out 0 0.01. Great. Go to the home view. And so now I'm going to use the edit tool and basically just pull this up a little bit. It's going to give it more of a kind of muscle car look. You'll see from the side just by changing the profile here, you get very different feeling vehicles. And then just pull that this way a little bit. So it's a little bit more exposed around the back. And then I don't need it to be that exposed. Obviously, that's kind of ridiculous. So I'm still using the edit tool. So I'm just going to grab through here and use alt and just pull this down just once like that. And then weld the vertices again. And then I'm gonna straighten that out again because it's kind of funny looking. That's also helped me kind of create a little bit of a spoiler on the back. So you can see I've got a pretty clearly defined edge here, which is something that I can now grab. And I'm just gonna exaggerate this as a feature like that. And now I've got a cool little spoiler on the back of my car. So next uh, is really just clean up and then we'd be ready to leave uh, the T-spine environment. So first thing I'm gonna do is just sort of flatten this area out because this is just, it's just too wobbly. So we'll just do that like this. So 0 0.01 again. And because I'm using the, um, the mirror function, you'll see that it's mirrored that same feature across. I don't have to do it on both sides. That green line is basically got me covered. Uh, then I'm going to just straighten this out a bit. So I'm going to go to these two and just let's flatten that profile out. And have a quick look from the top. All right, it's starting to look more like something. It's got some character going. Uh, I'm going to pull these three in just a little bit, just to give myself a little bit more profile. And then I might actually just pull these out just a hair like that. Starting to look good. I'm a little concerned about this. You can see there's this weird kind of crease happening and that's because of basically just the way that this piece here is now folding on itself. So you can see it's like, it's gone around a corner like that. So again, I can clean that up. So just grab these two and just, there we go. And you'll see that is becoming less exaggerated. Um, it's kind of a concern though, because if you play around with it too much, I'm sure if I hit finish form here, 
yeah, it's going to warn me that there's something happening here. So this is a really great tool when you're um, when you're working with T-splines for the first time, because anything that you do, if you create a um, self-intersecting geometry that wouldn't work, it's going to warn you. And um, the other thing that's really useful is you'll notice that this geometry here is now crashing out. You can see it's ghosted out through it, letting me know that this design won't work because if I try to build this, it's going to collide with an existing piece of geometry. So I'm going to make life easy for myself. I'm going to try first getting rid of these arches. That looks better. It's got more of a kind of mean look, uh, sort of like these big rear fenders. I'm going to grab these and go to modify and then slide edge again. And I'm just going to push it like there. All right, that's better. And then let's just flatten that guy out. So it looks more like an actual wheel launch. Again, there's some just kind of weirdness going on there. So actually one of the easiest things to do is if I just grab that, get rid of it, do the same thing on the other side. It's going to clean that up. It's going to lose the sharpness, but actually I think that adds some character. And then if I want to really exaggerate that, I can then just grab uh, these faces here. So these four faces of my well, uh, wheel arch and then go to modify. And you'll notice that it's actually modifying it from a great position to do this. So now I've just added just that little tweak is just added a little bit more character to those wheel arches back there. And I think I'm going to do the same to the front. So I'm just going to double click that edge. I can probably get rid of this one. Let's see what happens if I get rid of this one. Well, first you got to get out of edit form. Yeah, you see that that didn't really make a huge difference. If I leave it in because of the character that's going on here. So I need to keep that for sure. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of that corner, get rid of that corner, a little bit more character going on here and then slide that edge. Yeah, about halfway is good. Yeah, that's starting to look a little bit more like something interesting is happening. And then again, just gonna, whoops. Just give this a little bit of a pop like that. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. So the last step for me is going to be just sort of like cleaning these edges up. Uh, I won't keep going through that through this video. I think you guys get the gist. Uh, but I want to just add some sort of definition areas using a crease. So I'm going to go to modify and then crease. And I'm going to crease those wheel arches first because I think that's going to look really cool. So let's just do that. Yeah, that's given it a little bit more pop. And then I can always grab those edges and just to like really exaggerate what I'm talking about, just use the global scale and just just pop it out like that a little bit more. Yeah. So you can see it's got more of an aggressive line on it. I'm going to do the same with this edge. So just double click that guy and go modify and then crease. So we've got a nice sharp spoiler edge on the back there. And then lastly, sort of like a definition of a cockpit. Um, I'm going to crease out a line for where the glass would go. So I'm going to modify crease. And it's just going to pull across like this. And let's try all the way over the top too. Yeah, I like that. So hopefully everything is clean and I haven't messed anything up. I might just grab this corner and just 
push it this way once. There we go. So with that, I can just hit OK and then finish form. If there's anything wrong, this is where T-spines will tell me. It looks good. I did forget to clean that area up though. So I can just go back to my T-spline and just to like give it a little bit of breathing room, all I'm gonna do is grab these three here and just pull them like that. Not too much. And then same thing here. If I grab these three and I'm just gonna move them basically until they're out of the way. Now, this isn't working super well because I'm basically, if I look at this from the side, you see basically what I've done is just kind of winged it out like that. It's not super amazing. If I wanted to give this more definition, then what I can do is go to modify and then subdivide and just pick with alt these three and hit okay. And then you can basically just grab that edge and start to Pull it more like that. And now I can pull this one back. And it looks better. And you've got a cool looking feature happening over here now. Of course, if you don't like it, you can always just hit OK and then just get rid of that one. And that'll simplify things. All right. So I'm gonna hit finish form. And then there's just a couple steps left to turn this into a mini 4WD. So first thing to do is go to create and then thicken, because right now this is just a patch surface. Uh, I'm gonna pick the body in here and then define to it minus one. That's great, it's given it a thickness. You'll notice over here that I'll now have a solid geometry and the patch from the T-spline as well. So you can see that's hidden. This is my final piece. I noticed here, obviously, that I've, I've crashed into it. If I uh, was making a longer tutorial, I would just spend some time and clean that up. But for the sake of this, I think it's fine. Then we'll go combine and then join. This is my target. And I want to combine it with that and with this one. Hit OK. And then all I have to do is just pick that surface and that surface and I'm done. And that's all there is to it. Easy, right? Or at least easy when you know. Okay, guys, so I hope you liked that video. Um, don't forget to like, share and subscribe um, and leave a comment if there's something that I missed or something you want to see in another video. I do keep a list of them. I know that I'm not putting videos out as frequently as I would like to. That will change, I promise. Uh, while you're still here, don't forget to check out the Fusion 360 official learning portal. There's a ton more tutorials on there. And if you're an industrial designer, there's a ton of tutorials specifically made for you. So link in the description below, probably somewhere around my face right now, is a little screen grab of some of the tutorials you can find on there. So until next time, see you later. Seriously, please do like, share, and subscribe. It really helps.